Hey everybody, this is Three Questions with Stephanie Smith. Joe, I got key music and everything. I've heard it. <laughs> yeah, right. Love it. Hey, Stephanie, I've actually connected uh, several times. It's the first time I think we've ever like sat down on a Zoom or whatever Zoom-ish, Zoom-like, but we had conversations over the phone uh, and you have a really interesting story and I'm really pumped to um, kind of get into that and kind of talking about your your health um, journey and the things that you do there. I know you're participating in the 75 hard. I don't know why you're doing that. It's like, I just want to, and you're just so you know, you're doing it over like, you know, December holidays are coming up. And Thanksgiving in the U.S.? Like, why would you even do that to yourself? I mean, it says 75 hard, so I just thought, you know, why this not make it as time. hard as possible? All right, we'll see. I, I kind of I feel, because if you screw up a day, you got to start back at 75. So we'll see if you get it done, like, in June. So when I'm still doing this at the end of the school <laughs> right. year, yes, you'll have right. a little <laughs> understanding. Right. And the other thing, too, that we're going to talk about in the longer podcast is that you actually are a teacher right now. You are also um, formerly uh, school-based admin, central office admin, went back to the classroom and you kind of have some like interesting perspectives because I think a lot of times and I think I'm, I'm really excited to kind of learn more about that and some of the stuff that you share. But before we kind of get into that, I'm going to start with the three questions here. And so I know um, just having conversations with you, uh, just how much you enjoy kids, how much you enjoy the teaching profession. Uh, when you look back at your own experience in school, like who's a teacher that inspired you and why? Sure. So I I've had a lot. I've been really fortunate. Um, but I think the first teacher that had a huge impact on me was actually my second grade teacher named Mrs. Van Atten. And that was in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. And she set up her classroom to give so much student ownership of learning. It was like surprising to me. I remember as a second grader being like, you're kidding. There's all these different things for us to choose from. And we had a little hook with our name on it, right? And we got to move our hook to all the different activities. She had carpentry outside her classroom where we were like doing some light woodworking um you could i know right you Back in, in, had like you know nail guns and stuff like that, that in was, like, retrospect you know it was the it was the late 80s early 90s she was right. she was getting away with it um no but there were tons of choices for us that involved like lots of hands-on learning where we would you know apply our math skills and we could do science experiments but there was this idea that we could kind of move freely about the class Room and we really own the learning. And I just remember how fun that was and how um, she really made us feel like we had a lot of choice and that we could make those good decisions. And mm -hmm. I can, you know, it was just surprising to me at that time um, that we were like, really, you're going to let us make these choices for ourselves. I just yeah. hadn't experienced that in my, you know, earlier years of elementary school. So that was really impactful to me. Um, I thought about her and sort of her joy of the joy that she had for teaching, the way that she communicated with us and how her classroom was such a fun place to mm -hmm. learn um, and how we felt like it belonged to us. And so that's something that I've carried with me, you know, throughout my whole experience. Is, is she still around? She retired, actually. And the first year I taught high school um, in Massachusetts, actually, I was in the district where she was retiring from. So she wow. has since retired um, and living, you know, her best retired life. But she... Love it. She really I, had a huge impact. It's Mrs. Van. How do you say it? Mrs. Van Atten. Yep. Mrs. Van Atten. If yeah. you are listening, shout out. <laughs> so two things. Okay. First of all, I, I remember my grade five teacher, Mrs. Sloan, basically saying like, you can do a book report on like whatever country you want in the world. And I did one on, on, I'm not even kidding. Now it's like kid stuff, right? It was on Brazil and I did like a 45 page report. Now it wasn't like 45 pages full of lines, right? It was like, you know, five lines picture kind of thing. And like, I always wanted to go to Brazil and it was like, so, you know, it was just kind of like, where do you want to like go in the world? And I actually like always remember that and that choice and like why people picked what they did. I don't know why I picked that, but it's all like having that choice, those opportunities to explore some of those things is really powerful. Um, the second thing, I'm going to start a new podcast called stuff we used to be able to do in school. <laughs> Like yeah, carpentry yeah, like, makes the list, like giving right, second yeah, graders saws. <laughs> Some of the stuff that used to happen in school is is like crazy, right? Yeah, that, yeah. Things we, I, we actually, we had, this is a weird thing. I've told those people, um, we got to a certain grade level um, where we had no supervision. Like basically 
Right, right. And that's the yeah, <laughs> independent like, study. Like, yeah, you just like when you had no, like, I'm not talking supervision class, but like recess, you could just be like, hey, you're you're old enough, you're like 10. <laughs> you just you just do your thing, right? We we're right. And I just remember that and thinking like, and now like there's no way. And I think actually probably something horrible happened, you know, to some kids somewhere when they're not, and then they probably just said everyone has a you know, supervision at recess now forever. So it's just kind of interesting, like some of the things that we used to do as kids um, in school that we can't get away with now. But I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but it's a thing, right? It'd be kind of an interesting podcast because I think a lot of people would be, you know, I actually, I don't know if this happened to you, but like we used to have, I used to have a teacher smack me in the back of the head all the time. <laughs> Did you have that? Did you no, we had we had a teacher that like threw a book at a map that then like came off the wall, right? And he was back the next day. Like there was that kind oh, of yeah. like like things didn't surprise you. Like oh, that teacher loses his temper a lot, and you were like, yeah, he does. Like, yeah, we no. yeah no, that was like it, like I actually remember like getting smacked in the back of the head by a teacher and them calling my parents and parents like, what did George do? <laughs> yeah, that was it. That was the, that was the conversation. Like it was my fault, right? So <laughs> like a weird 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 time. And maybe if you're like hopefully you're. You know, I'm good. Don't worry. Okay. So like, don't, don't, don't be, be calling anybody. Anyway. So second question, uh, when you think, and it's interesting your journey, because like I said, you were, you know, you've done admin, you're back to teaching right now. So when you think about administrators that inspired you, who's, who is like somebody that sticks out to you and why? So I think my first principal, um, in Massachusetts, Dan Gudekanst, he's now a superintendent in Massachusetts, but he had this like steady, energy to him where he was just very consistent and fair and kind and he was interested in everything that people had to say like one of those people that is just really listening and he he came into classrooms so frequently like as a student as a student teacher I just hadn't seen a principal especially of like a large high school be so mm -hmm. present in classrooms and so supportive to new staff um I really felt like he was invested in all aspects of what was happening in the school district and, um, you know, highly intelligent, but also just like very easy to talk to, you know, mm -hmm. and as somebody that's just coming out of college, who's like teaching for the first time, you know, you're very nervous. And, um, I think when you realize that, um, you know, your principal is really invested in what's going on with the students and also like cares about you know, the poetry lesson that you're teaching that day right. is like asking right. meaningful questions and just popping in to see the kids and like watching someone interact with students, you know, it just really made a huge impression on me. This idea of, um, you know, really listening to people showing up and being present in that moment in whatever exchange, whether it was like me as a new teacher or watching him with the students or veteran staff, mm -hmm. the way that he would lead meetings, he had like such a kind of quiet composure to him that I really admired. And that has stuck with me for sure. And that that's like, you know, there is always this kind of mis misconception about high school that, you know, we don't have time to connect with kids because there's so many kids. But I think it's imp like I think it's as important as, as the elementary level. It's harder to do because you do have more kids, but it's it's no less important. I think that's I think the more the if you if you really think about it, we, we always talk about kids losing interest as they get older. But also we lose relationships as we get older. So there's, I, I kind of believe there's a correlation between that, right? If you don't feel there's people that are invested in you, like an elementary teacher that has you all day, you're going to feel invested in. But then a teacher that doesn't maybe know your name, then of course you're going to lose interest, right? Whereas, you know, when I got to college level, I'd be like one kid out of 500 and look up my marks based on my number, right? And then guess what happens? I don't show up to that class, right? I only show up when I have to. And I think that that's, so that's really awesome. So how do you, how do you say his last name? Cause I gotta, I gotta hit the shout out button for him. It's a uh, Gouda Kanst. Gouda Kanst. So yeah. shout out if you're listening. <laughs> Dr. Gouda Kanst. Yep. Gouda Dan Gouda Kanst. <laughs> All right. Okay. Last question. Yes. So last question is, so you had a myriad of experiences. Um, and I know just from our conversations, you are continuously learning, continuously growing. And honestly, what I appreciate is I know that you push yourself, um, professionally and personally like i've seen aspects of that too where you probably a little bit like me kind of like hey i like appreciate my growth but i'd never feel comfortable with it right and i think that's something that's why we connect so easily so when you think about your first year of teaching like if you can go back and talk to yourself what advice and it's kind of interesting because you know going to admin going teaching like what would you say to yourself like what advice would you want to give to yourself back then 
Yeah. I think I actually wrote about this. It was like my top 10 mistakes, things that I would like never wish on right. someone else or never do again. Right. Um, right. Honestly, like I think my, the biggest thing that I would change is to go back right away and like feel more comfortable being myself. I think when I first went into the classroom, I had this idea that I had to be an authority figure, especially because at mm -hmm. the time I was teaching high school as like a young person, I had so many rules that I couldn't even keep track of them. And I, that's like not my personality. I, I really like to build positive relationships with the students and, um, you know, use, that connection to kind of drive the way the classroom runs and give kids like some choice and ownership of the space and things like that. But it was like, I was modeling what I had experienced and, and what I saw in some of my colleagues. So sometimes it was like, you know, you don't have a writing utensil. It was like, you're losing points off your grade. Like right. it was just stuff that was not authentic to who I am as a person. And so I felt in the beginning, like, I just couldn't find my footing because I wasn't quite being myself, you know, right. and I've watched teachers who are so funny and I've watched teachers who are really strict and run like a tight ship. And the thing is, I think it's just so important to find your voice and find who you are, because if you're not comfortable with yourself and you're in front of a room of like 20 to 25 right. teenagers, um, you know, it, it's not going to feel good. They will see through it right They'll away. <laughs> yeah. So, so actually like I, I mentor a lot of people in speaking, and, you know, kind of going there and I've like, we'll get to know them. We'll have great conversations and then they will go up on stage and then they will just be someone they are not. And I think sometimes, and I think this is probably true in teaching too. It's not that they're just someone they're not, they're someone else that they think is good at it. Right. And I think part of it is I say like, Hey, like when you're on stage, be you amplified like that's you like it's you but just a little bit louder right and i think part of it too because you do have that presence don't try to be like me the way i do it because i'm myself right i don't try to replicate like i learn from other people and i think that's an important aspect but ultimately be yourself because people can like kids and adults can read through that when you're not that authentic self and there's you know something missing there so i think you know there's there's so many aspects where that that advice is uh, really meaningful. So I, I appreciate your vulnerability and sharing that. I am so looking forward to our next conversation because like I'm I'm very interested in in both aspects of what of what we're going to talk about, you know, with your journey in health, obviously, it's one of the reasons we connected, uh, but also kind of your teacher admin teacher journey and how that is. So uh, anyone make sure you follow Stephanie on Instagram at EduHealthy. And she got great tips. She got a Wednesday thing that I kind of push you to do. That you I love. Actually, I'm I'm your biggest fan on this. I watch it every time, every well, Wednesday. Thank so, you. so make sure that you watch that. But Stephanie, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for taking the time. You know, obviously in the classroom. So it's like you taught all day and then now you're stuck with me. So thanks for taking the time to join me today. And everyone, thanks for taking the time to listen. Here we go. Bye, everybody.